Welcome to Radio Fixer's channel. Subscribe for upcoming videos. This is part three of repairing 1953 Motorola clock radio, model 62 CW. I highly suggest going back and reviewing other videos regarding this repair to see the process we took to get to this level. Really, my goal is uh, to create these videos so a brand new person can use the information and be able to get into the hobby. It is really is a wonderful hobby and very rewarding uh, to bring back something that totally you know, dead back to life and sing again. I put these three capacitors together. These are all the negative twisted together as you see. And here I start making pigtail. I'm going to do in each of them so I can install this. They are 47 microfarad. All right. It's always helpful if you have something like this. I'm going to just put some solder here so you hold all the negatives together. And just a little bit. See now the three are secure, they're not going to come apart. I can't make more pigtail. So I'm going to use a little thicker screwdriver for this. Just twist it like this. See in the end it's sharp. All right, see it. there's three pigtail in the center. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. So I cut three shrink tube and I feed them inside. I ran out of the black, so that's why I'm using all red. Push it far enough so the heat doesn't shrink it. Meanwhile, I'm going to solder all this. Okay, this is the negative. I'm going to get my thicker screwdriver. The reason I use thick is it's about the same size of the center, the negative. All right. So I'm going to make a pigtail right here over the ground wire like that. All right, they get the capacitor, start twisting it inside that like that. All right, now I can solder this. All right, that's soldered. Of course, I could put shrink tube right over this one. Okay. All right, you see I put the wires inside those pigtail. Now I'm going to solder them. I already soldered one. I have two more to go. Okay, that is one. All right, all of them finish. As soon as cool off, I'm going to put the insulation over them. All right, as you see, the all the insulation is over the wire, all the four. So you can get a lighter like this or heat gun. Go over shrinking tube a little bit, just a little bit. They're done, now I have to secure them somewhere. I'm not going to leave it loose like this, it should be secured. Original here, it was looks like it's stamped here, but uh, somebody removed that bracket. Usually it has like a loop that the capacitor goes in. Seems it's been removed, it's been cut right here. So I need to find a way to install this so it doesn't move around. All right, let me figure that out. Do you remember when I cut this out of radio? The way you take this out, of course, I was still loosening it up. You use the screwdriver, just keep moving this. It comes apart like that, and that can be reused uh, for the new cord that you're going to install. So this is comes apart like that. Just want to show you quickly, you know. All right. Next thing what we need to do after installing all the capacitors, you know, resistors, replacing bad resistors. Last thing to do is to install polarized cord to this radio. One was going here. As you see, I left a little piece. The second one was here, right here. Of course, this black wire, after installing those, it goes right here. And that's again why you're taking a lot of pictures to remember. 
up to now I don't know if it's gonna work or not. <laughs> up to now I'm just changing the parts, right? <laughs> because usually I don't want to test it with bad parts. I want to mess more things up, right? So let's make you start on this thing. So I'm holding end of it. I'm gonna heat up right here. Okay, let's take this one out too. Okay, that's out. Now I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna heat it up to clean up that hole to be easier to install. As you see now there's a space for the cord. Because there's two wires goes in here. One from underneath come in here. This is another one. So it's trying to make a space. All right, let's install the cord. As you know, majority of the old radio, it comes with non-polarized plug. What that means, you see, they're the same size. You see that? So the, the problem with this is when you hook it up to host plug, you don't know which side it goes to the switch and which side to the chassis. For safety, I always replace them because I want to make sure the hot always goes to the switch and the negative or, or neutral always goes to the chassis. So I replaced it with something like this. This is, they call it polarized. What that means, you see, these are, these are different size. See that? So when you plug this to the house plug, this is always neutral, or some people they call it negative, goes to the chassis. The small one, this one, always is hot and some people call it positive this always goes on and off switch some of the wires they actually mark them to tell you which one is hot and which one is not see here has some writing on it sometimes they do that depends of the wires see this one is been is hot but i always double check what i do because I want to mark them. Is this thing so hard to see? They're so small. I get my multimeter, put it in the sound position right here. Then when I put in the small side or the hot side, then if I touch this wire, it doesn't sound. That means that's a neutral or again, negative neutral. If this I touch, it should make sound. You see that? It means that he is hot or positive, all right? So what I do to remember, get a highlighter, you know, right here, I highlight it as well, red. So I know this is hot because again, this is so hard to see. Anyway, here, yeah, you always want to do that. The hot side goes to the on and off switch. Always you want to do that for safety of others, all right? Hopefully this will help you as well. Every radio up to now I work they use this size of light. You know, it comes in this box, usually there's 10 of them. This radio, you know, they use that one. And it comes 10 in one box as it shows here. This is what we're talking about. See, when I was saying it's too large bulb, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> it is like a night bulb, it's a 10 watt. That's crazy. This Motorola is very different than everything else I worked on before. Anyway, just want to show you this quickly so you see the difference. All right, now is the time to put the tubes back in the radio. But before we do that, we want to check the pens. You see some of them are bended and they're pretty dirty. So I'm going to use this tool. This actually, you know, it fix uh, any bent tube because you don't want to use any type of tool to straighten this you want to break the glass all right what i will do just put it right here press it in see they're all bended now they're straight see how hard it was going in now it's going in much easier to see that and then after that what i do i get just the alcohol with the cotton swab I'm going to clean all the pens as best as I can all right do you want to clean it of course like that make sure both sides are clean spend some time to clean in this you do not want us to use sandpaper or anything like that you're going to mess them up that's the best way I know 
to clean them. I'm going to try it one more time. Make sure the channel is straight. Then it's ready to be installed. This one I wrote on it is 35W4. As you see, that's why I documented here. So 35W4 is right here. See where the speaker is? The draw is right here. It's the first one here. You just put it right here. And you press it down. It's set. I'm going to use the same technique for the rest of the tubes. So I just want to show you quickly what I usually do before installing these miniature tubes. When you take them apart, they're all going to bend, you know, so you need something like this to fix those bended pen for miniature tube. So yeah, let me use the same technique to clean the rest of them and install them. All right, to solve that issue, uh, since, you know, the bracket is missing to install those three capacitor. So I got this out of the recycling bin. It's like a cardboard tubing. It's pretty strong. Already measured how deep it should be. So I'm going to cut this off to install those three capacitors inside and somehow hook it up to the chassis. As I mentioned earlier, they removed that little clip it has that it holds chassis itself to the frame so it doesn't fall. So that's my goal, that's what my plan. Ready to start cutting this. All right. I'm gonna hold on to this. This is a good thing to keep for other radio that I'm working on. If somebody removed the original capacitor and they get rid of it, so I can use this. This is it. So I need to make something for the bottom and then some type of label go over it. Let me work on that. I create this so I can put those capacitor inside. And that is how the back look like. If you'd like to know how this actually be made, I'm gonna put something up here check this video it will walk you through step by step how to create something like this so anyway i'm going to install this under the chassis so it can uh, protect those three capacitors as you see i mark them they're all 50 microfarad and they're red orange green and black of course is a brown it looks good i mean it's acceptable <laughs> So just to protect those, I don't like those being loose back under the chassis. So let's install it, all right? So I'm going to install those three inside like that. And I'm going to secure it here. I'm not going to fill up inside with BVAX. You know, it's just going to leave it like this. So next person make the job easier to take this capacitor and replace them. Because every 10 years or maybe longer, uh, those capacitors need to be replaced. There's a little hole here. So I'm going to make it like some type of bracket. I'm going to install it right there. As you see under the chassis, everything is replaced. All the capacitors are replaced and there are too many of them. The only one has not replaced this, but all others replaced. As you saw, there's a two resistors replaced, one here and another is back there underneath. You see right there. So everything is replaced and we secure this, then we can test it. I think it is much better this way. You know, at least those capacitors are protected and the next person know the value of all these capacitors. All right, after installing everything, you know, the radio started working, but then the clock is not working. You know, the clock was working when I got it started on this radio, but for one reason or another, I guess because it was sitting upside down for so long, I'd be able to work on it. Something happened with the clock. This clock, they have a certain, I call it a motor, and that is an old design. I promise you that's what's going on. I check all the wiring, everything is fine. And again, uh, the radio works now, but the clock has stopped working. And that's what's happening. If you store these radios, make sure to use them once in a while so the clock doesn't freeze. Uh, these are again the problem with the, the 50s radio type of motor that we're using was was the issue so what i did there are three screws in the back i removed all of them and there's one two three and this plate comes out i pulled this out let me turn it around show it to you see the clock comes out so i need to unsolder all this there's two here two there 
so the clock can come out uh, the issue again you know, with this clock let me show you you see this motor here usually inside there's oil and the oil gets pretty hard you don't want to take it apart if you take it apart it's never going to work anymore <laughs> And you don't want to drill it. If you drill it, those uh, things get into it. So do not drill this or do anything like that or try to open it. If your clock doesn't work and the, all the wiring tests that you do with multimeter is fine, then this is the issue. 99% of the time, this is the issue. This discouraging, I was not planning to do that in this radio. You know, again, uh, when she brought it over the clock was working the radio was not working nice vice versa so let me figure this out all right so this is how i look like i'm going to show you how to take it apart also i take this out it has three screws that you remove the screw it comes out of the cabinet i'm going to make it much easier for on soldering this i'll show you how to put it back together all right of course, this is the backing, you know, it just is like a, a cardboard. That's what we got to do to fix this radio. Sometimes that happens, you know, and it's okay. All right, I unsoldered this wire as well. Make sure to take a picture so if you know where it goes. So that is out. So of course, these are, we don't want to damage them. And so I'm going to hold like this. And these four uh, screws need to come out. Uh, try to remember how everything goes in. You see how this is? That's the way you want to put it back. All right, I already started loosening it up. So I need to remember how to put this thing back together. So those four comes out, be able to remove this. Sometimes just taking the two uh, screw in the top, it might come out, sometimes it doesn't. So when I take this out, okay, then there is piece right here that should come out. Let me try to do other side. As I mentioned, I already loosened them up. They were pretty tight with a different a screwdriver, of course. Again, this piece comes out like that. All right need to remember which one goes where so this was going right over here this way see the cut right there let's see if this is gonna come out or not I need to take the other one too sometimes these screws are different size make sure to remember where everything goes this thing doesn't help that so so long it's hard to get to everything the other clock radios that i worked in the past they were not this long this shaft okay that's out okay you see how this is goes here remember how to put them back together okay now you can pull this out like that see let's put this back all right let's just start working this darn thing let me quickly explain to you what I actually did to fix this. I made a video in other clock radio that I worked on. I'm going to put it up here. Feel free to watch part five, which I go through the detail how to do this. But here I'm just going to show you quickly. Always wear a glove so you don't burn your hand and some surface that it can handle high heat. The problem with majority of this motor is the oil inside it get pretty hot and that's why the motor is not running anymore so you want to use the heat to fix that issue so what i do i use the soldering iron put it in the highest temperature mine i put about 900 degrees of course you put the soldering iron over it uh, you know this gets so hot and the oil inside is start bubbling coming out of here sometime if there's oil in it sometimes the oil is leak out when that is start happening i use this because i can control and i put a few drop at a time then heat it up again 
and continue to do this. I put about close to 10 drops, sometimes to 12 drops of this inside here is a process. It's going to take a little time. You have to wait the oil go down, heat again and again. 99% of time, the motor start working with no issue. So really that's what I do. Again, watch this video up here. I'll go through a detail how to do this. All right, after lubricating this, uh, we're going to install it back and test it to see if it works or not. Hopefully it will work. Otherwise, finding something like this is going to be very hard. So it's the same concept. Again, you move this. This goes right here. So this needs to be a line here, like that. The screws underneath, of course, you want to align them too. The easiest starting these two first, but not all the way, just get it started. All right, this little lap, i going to hold this, you know, pull this back like that. So you install it like this. See, like that. All right. Okay, both sides are installed as you see. Let's see how it's holding this piece. What it does, it put pressure on the motor using the longer screwdriver. This is just for the test only. I'm not going to make it too tight. Okay, I'm going to hook it up to the test lead and to the radio. Then test it to see if it works or not. I'm not going to install it until I make sure it's working. All right, let's do that. Now let's talk about some safety issue. You're dealing with electricity is very dangerous. It can kill you. So be very careful, please. I need a few equipment that you can purchase it in Amazon. First one, you must have isolated transformer to keep you safe when you're working in the antique radios and also variable condenser or they call it variac you can actually adjust the amount of electricity that comes inside the radio and this one the dim ball tester you can actually build this yourself you can google it there's tons of information out there this is the setup i'm using on my workbench uh, please make sure you know to use this equipment to keep you safe as you see, I run a test wire. Uh, of course, I separate those uh, very far away from each other. It, this thing now is running at least close to eight to 10 hours. Left the run, as you see, the clock is running. All right, so it seems like the motor is fixed. So next thing, I'm gonna take all this test wire out. I'm gonna try to install, you know, the clock back and the radio. Of course, I'm going to unplug it. So happy about this. That's encouraging that the motor is fine. At this time, I want to take the opportunity and thanks my subscribers uh, with their uplifting comments. You always encourage me to upload more videos since this is just a hobby of mine. Again, I appreciate you. Enjoy all these videos and you all have an awesome day. Take care. If you're interested to see more videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will be notified uh, when a new video being uploaded. You have a great day.